Night shift gas station clerks, what's the weirdest thing you've ever encountered? Story one, not me, but my dad. It was near Christmas time. He was a student working part-time at a gas station that is within city limits, but not really central, so you get all kinds of people. A man stormed inside looking around wildly before asking my dad, Do you have rackfisk sauce? Rackfisk is a traditional Norwegian dish that isn't really eaten that often. My father, kind of confused, told him that, no, they do not have rackfisk sauce. The man's eyes darted around the store some more before settling on a small, crappy plastic Christmas tree with tiny lights that was placed on the counter. He then said, I'll take the tree, put more money than the tree was worth on the counter, took the tree, and disappeared into the night. Him and the tree was never seen again. Story 2 my husband worked at a huge truck stop, so it had showers and laundry. So one night, two female truckers come in and pay for shower tokens. They start eyeing up the workers and go over and shove $100 into a utility guy's pocket and tell him there's a lot more if he joins them in the showers. So a little bit later, he comes out of the shower, hair wet and a couple hundred dollars richer. Story 3. Was April 1st and about noon. Kid walks in with his jacket partly unzipped while his friends are outside with a camcorder. Kid reaches into his jacket and shows me the handle of a pistol. Give me the money. I look at him, look out the window at his friend, and then try to judge whether I would be able to get around the counter fast enough to grab this little punk and F his crap up. I decided that he would probably be able to scurry away before I could get a good hold of him for the beating he so richly deserved. So I looked him right in the eyes and very calmly and quietly said, You better turn around and leave right now before I F you up and make your parents cry. Kid just looks back at me, backs away, giggles nervously, and takes off. If I had been two feet to the left, though, I would have just gone to town beating his butt. Well, first off, sure you did. Second, hey folks, don't do this. Why on earth would you risk your life for a gas station's money or any workplace's money? No. Story 4. One night I was ringing up a woman. There was a loud snap like a whip and a sudden jerk under our feet. Being from Cali, I knew this was an earthquake. But this was New Hampshire, and when I told the woman, if that happens again, we have to get into the freezer, she looked at me like I grabbed her butt and hauled it out of the store. Story 5. This is a secondhand story, but you reminded me of it. So my friends working at this gas station around Tam. Small town, not a lot of diversity there. This white van pulls up and out piles like ten big black dudes. They all run into the gas station at once. Suddenly, in a thick Jamaican accent, one of the guys yells out the door to the one left behind filling the take, Hey man, what you want to drink? My friend relaxes, knowing that he's safe. My friend realizes he might be a racist. Story 6 I worked thirds in a local convenience store, and a regular would come in when it was dead and we'd have it in the bathroom. Happened a good half dozen times, then I never saw her again. Story 7. I worked in a 7-Eleven in the mid-90s on the graveyard shift. There was a woman who would come in and face the store every few days and stock the shelves. We were not supposed to let her in, but we did anyway since it made our lives so much easier. I don't know why, but that one really creeps me out. I hate that. Story 8. I worked years ago at a gas station alongside my mom. I worked the morning shift. We started at 3.30 a.m. The story is on the Kentucky-Virginia state line, so we've seen a lot of crap there. A few of the most memorable things that happened was a car pulled up to the diesel pump. Clearly, there was a fight going on. We got close enough to see it was a woman beating a man, and it looked like she was stabbing him. The woman left, and we locked him in the store until the police and ambulance arrived. She stabbed him with a screwdriver, stole his car, and his medication, according to him. Another time, a man had an argument with his wife and casually started stabbing himself in the parking lot. My mom and another co-worker were robbed at gunpoint one morning. The dumb butt came into the store, bought something, and then came back with a mask minutes later. He is in prison now for strong-armed robbery. Story 9. My favorites were, 1. The needle with actual heroin in it under the bag in the trash can for a drop. We changed the bags every night like we wouldn't notice it. 2. The bag of drugs a guy left on the counter when he paid for his stuff. 3. The pair of panties in the trash can that looked clean but smelled so strongly of vagina that the whole bathroom smelt like that all night. 4. And you know how people put a cig over their ear, maybe a J at the least? Try full-on needle over his ear, super casual. I stared and said, uh, you got a little thing there. And he's like, oh, and put it quickly in his pocket and said, you didn't see that. I just asked him to please not leave any needles around as I was sick of picking them up and it's not safe. 
Story 10. Had a guy wander in drunk from the hooters next door wanting to use the phone to get a ride home. This was years ago. Kept trying to make himself sound like a tough guy by bragging about being in the Hell's Angels. He also said a few decades ago he'd killed four ends. I just kind of grinned awkwardly and asked if the police knew about that. I didn't believe him, of course. He was there for about an hour waiting for his ride and kept telling me how he was going to come back the next day and give me a motorcycle and a gun. I guess he wanted me to join the gang, too. Having been night manager for a gas station for all of two months, like a decade ago, I can attest to meeting people like this. I was never robbed, never found needles, but good lord did I meet drunk people who wanted to tell me stories about how cool they were. They were not cool. Ever. Also, I know some of you in the comments are fascinated by how many jobs the mainly facts guy has had, so add this one to the list. It's a long list. Story 11. Not a gas station, but a train station cafe. There were overnight works going on, so we stayed open until 1 or 2 a.m. for the builders. One night, this older gentleman comes in, well-dressed. Asked for a coffee, but can't pay when I make it. So I give it to him anyway, since I'll just throw it otherwise, and he asks me for some cake. I refuse, and he goes, I sing for my supper. And then starts to belt out Frank Sinatra right there in the shop. And he just won't stop. He's there for like half an hour. I tried to get security to look after him because he clearly wasn't all there. Found him later singing for the builders who were giving him sandwiches. Eventually called the local police who got him supervised until he could catch a train home in the morning. Story 12. When I was in high school, I worked at a gas station and one night I heard a loud crash and stuff started falling off the back wall. Puzzled, I just sort of stared at the wall and then a guy, clearly intoxicated, walks in and says, yeah, sorry, I backed into your building, but I'm not paying for any damages. So do you guys have any zigzags? And proceeded to shortchange me for a pack of them. Laugh my frickin' butt off. Story 13. A few things. One is a man who came in very drunk and told me that the key to happiness is cocaine, hookers, and a new truck and a bottle. He then tipped me 20 bucks. Another time, I had like 20 police officers in my store at the same time for no reason. Story 14. A drunk guy tried to fight me for stealing his job at the gas station. He started chasing me and fell down in the street. The police called and questioned me, and then the police sergeant blew her cover when she started yelling at me for beating up her son. He was in his mid-twenties, six foot, two seventy-five. I was a short, skinny 16-year-old. Story 15. Nothing really weird happened, per se. I worked at a Florida gas station for three years while in college. I saw a little kitten one night near midnight wander through the gas pumps crying out. Cars were driving around the lot and it could have gotten squashed at any moment. I ran outside leaving customers at the counter and scooped him up. He was filthy. Brought him around back and since I had no cage and nothing to put him in, I placed him inside a Lay's plastic tote, closed the top, and put a brick on top so he'd stay in it. Took him home after my shift, put him on the patio. Surprised my family the next day with a surprise kitten, but to my horror, his colon was prolapsing out of his body in a bloody infected mess. Took him to the vet, who said he probably got attacked by some animal. They gave him a bath, gave him shots, and put him on an antibiotic. When old enough, I got him neutered. The antibiotic fixed the prolapsing colon within a week, and he's still alive today, about 10 years old and more of an inside kitty now than an outside kitty. His name is Kitty, too. I am so happy that story had a happy ending. You had me worried that I came back to these stories after being really sick for days only to read about a dead cat. I was ready to just shut off my computer and go back to bed, but you saved it. Story 16. Always in the bathroom. I had to call 911 a few days ago at work because we had snakes in the bathroom. Blowjobs and unlocked bathrooms. Crack W, prostitute blood in the toilet, walls, floor, toilet paper dispenser. I watched a man try to rob a drive through liquor store window with a wooden baseball bat a few weeks ago while I was on shift two. Story 17. I used to have this woman come into the store all the time. She constantly told people that we were married and had seven kids together and that I didn't really work at gas station and sons, but that I worked for the U.S. Marshals. Had to have her removed for threatening customers and eventually perma-banning her. Moral of the story? Kids, don't do drugs. Story 18. A man with the thickest Texan accent coming in at 4 a.m. asking me if the diesel was winterized. We were in northern Canada in February. Story 19. A drunk woman threatened to shoot me if I didn't sell her a carton of cigarettes after her card got rejected for the fifth time. This was my third day on the job.
Story 20. There was a blizzard and they said I absolutely had to come in for the night shift even in spite of the state of emergency. That was effed up and how I managed to get to work was a story in and of itself. Anyway, halfway through the storm, in the middle of the night, a barefoot man with open wounds all over his face came running in. Then he suddenly stopped, stared at me for a moment, and asked if he could have some napkins. I simply pointed at the napkin dispenser. He took a huge effing handful, then he looked at me and cracked a huge smile and said, Thank you! In a very childish, pip-squeaked voice. He then disappeared into the night before I could even say anything and I never saw him again. He was the only customer we had that night beside a guy from the plow crew who needed some coffee. My guess was meth. With people like that, sometimes it's drugs and sometimes it's just weird people who keep weird hours just being weird. Story 21. I worked at a subway when I was 16. Two guys came in about 8.30 for food with both being high as a kite. They tried to covertly steal about five bags of chips. Like, chip bags are completely silent when being crammed into a jacket. Story 22. I worked in a rural gas station slash garage when I was in high school. One evening I was working and there were some pretty bad storms brewing. It didn't take long for there to be a fairly large group of people stopped at the station to find some shelter. I didn't think much of it. It wasn't the first time it had happened, but then they started blowing the tornado sirens. All of a sudden, there's a bunch of adults and families looking at little 16-year-old me looking for answers. There's no basement, so I did the first thing I could think of and shoved them all in the walk-in cooler. Shut us all in and rode out the storm. When it passed, I went out and there was a big plate glass window busted and some crap blown around the store. All the people came out of the cooler and were pretty much like, see you later, and left. I was pretty much left there by myself, like, what the F just happened? Story 23 I was a 19-year-old Fernail working the night shift who was grabbed from behind by a guy, he was the only one at the store at the time, with an attempt at S assault. I was a gym rat and he quickly realized it wasn't going to be easy. He let go, profusely apologized, and pleaded for me not to call the police. I got his license plate number and called my buddies from the department who were able to stop him about an hour later. Found out he had just been released that day from federal prison after serving time for an R charge. Story 24. My buddy worked overnight at a gas station and occasionally I would go to hang out with him. It was one of those where the toilets were around the back not accessible from inside the store. One night we were shooting the crap up in the store area, somebody came in and stole the toilets. We didn't know until he needed the bathroom. Who steals gross bathroom toilets? I barely ever tolerate touching toilets in gas stations. Why on earth would you want to steal one? I would sooner crap in a bucket than bring one of those things into my house. Story 25. Car pulled up, the driver started getting fuel, and the backseat passenger came in to look at sweets. The driver came in, paid for his fuel, then went back out to the car. The passenger never bought any sweets and spent 30 minutes begging me to sell him beer, can't sell alcohol past 10 p.m., and let him play video games on the PC in the office. He casually mentioned that his friends were taking him to A&E to get treatment for sepsis. His friends had to come in to get him to leave. On his way out, he stole a crate of Bud. The driver, who was a regular customer, later told me he had stuffed his pockets full of sweets, too. Story 26. One time while working late, I was chilling at the counter bored when suddenly three dudes came in. One wearing cardboard knight's armor, the other a bathrobe and a paper hat thing, and the last one a bunch of other random crap that did not go together in the slightest. All red-eyed and high as crap. Ha ha ha, all had the munchies and got a bunch of chips and soda and the usual junk food suspects. Came up to the counter and with ye old English accents that were horrible with mostly just overuse of the word ye and paid in gold, just regular cash with one Canadian coin, and said it was D&D &D night. They all wandered off to their carriage, which was a sadly rusted old Buick LeSabre. Made me laugh so hard it was an amazing sight to behold. Story 27. A man with his frying pan swaggered by saying sup, by the way, and then another one comes by and so on until I start hearing some banging pan noises and I find a bunch of guys jousting using pans and shopping carts in the middle of the night and I join them. I really want to criticize you for your near complete lack of punctuation, OP, but honestly, that story almost feels like it shouldn't have punctuation. Story 28. Not a gas station, but I worked nights at a college dorm. Once, got a call that some guys had somehow snuck onto the roof and were peeing off the ledge onto people walking by. Had to get security to go check. 
Turns out it was a bunch of drunk frat boys. On a similar note, I also got a call about a drunk homeless person blocking the gate to get into the dorm. Turned out to be a passed out resident who couldn't find their key. Story 29. Watched a very flamboyant gay man pepper spray a girl and then flip his hair and walk out. Apparently, she looked at him wrong. Everyone was drunk and it ended in a fight in the parking lot. Cops came, couldn't confirm if it was pepper spray or hot dog grease on the counter. Someone, a random patron, taste tested it to try. It was a good night. We ended up hiring bouncers, they broke up a fight in the store once, and a rather large bag of pills fell out. The bouncer looked at the pills, then he looked at me, I looked at him, then at the pills, he looked back at the pills, grabbed them, looked at me, and made direct eye contact as he slipped them in his pocket. Dude was huge, I wasn't about to say crap. Story 30. I worked at a gas station and fried chicken joint. Yeah, you know, it was in the South, when I was in high school. One evening, this older guy came in, reeking of alcohol, wearing a bowler hat and ratty old Hawaiian shirt, boxers, and slides. No pants. He walked into the store, looked at me and my coworker, and his eyes went real wide like dinner plates. Then he promptly turned around and left the store. I thought this was odd, but went about my cleaning until I rounded the corner to where he was, and lo and behold, on the floor was a solitary turd that was previously obscured by the counter. The man had walked into our gas station and crapped on the floor and immediately turned tail and left without so much as a word. Really makes me wonder what kind of life this feller was living. Needless to say, I refuse to clean it up at seven fifty an hour isn't enough to pay me to clean up human excrement. Thankfully, the shift lead cleaned it. I guess she valued her job more than I did. We printed out the guy's face from the security cameras and made sure he was put on our crap list. <laughs> Like a literal crap list? Story 31. 18 years old. Working the 2 to 10 shift at 7-Eleven. A guy walked in and said, Hey, girl. Like he knew me his entire life and leaned across the counter for a hug that I reluctantly reciprocated. Then he gave me daps and left a baggie of weed in my hand. Like a pretty decent sized nug. Then he turned around and left without another word. My coworker just looked at me and shrugged. I stuck the bag of weed in my bra and finished my shift. And yes, I smoked it later. Dumb as hell, I know. I haven't smoked in years, and I definitely would never smoke random weed given to me by a stranger ever again, especially not with fentanyl being all over the place. Story 32. Years ago, I worked overnights at a gas station in a pretty bad neighborhood in Florida. My first night working there, an older guy came in, walked up to the counter, and reached across and punched me in the jaw pretty hard. The guy I was working with chased him out the door while I called the cops to send someone over. My coworker came back pretty quickly looking frightened and said to send an ambulance because the crazy guy just died outside. EMT and police came. The guy was alive but had a pretty bad heart attack. Every other shift was pretty timid compared to that. Story 33. Crackheads. Just generally. I worked on a reserve where we give natives no tax. Guy comes in claiming to be native but no card, gets mad when we refuse then takes a crap on the sidewalk around the side of the building. Why do people always have to be pooping? Stop pooping where you shouldn't poop. Story 34. Not an employee, but I live in an area of Tulsa people describe as a bit shooty, I guess. One time I was about to walk into the corner store and I was texting, and as I was texting, my phone died in my hands. I looked up and through the door to see one man pacing the aisles and another holding a gun pointed at the clerk. I turned and got back in my car and went to call the police. Phone's dead, remember? So I pulled into my complex and knocked on the maintenance guy's door to call the cops, and he wasn't home. I knocked on the door of the neighbor I knew, and they weren't home either. I went upstairs and charged my phone, and by the time it finally turned on, the police were at the convenience store. Nobody was shot, thankfully, but I remember the helplessness coming off me in waves. The clerk's name was Sanjay, and I talked to him numerous times. My most vivid memory of him is the day after his daughter was born. He showed a photo to every customer who came to the counter. I left in fear, and the whole time I waited, I was terrified he would have been killed and I would have been the last person to see him alive. Story 35. Between the mutant raccoons that live in the crawl space beneath the gas station and the hand plants I torched out back, it would have to be the bathroom cowboy. But don't get me started on Spencer. Effing Middleton. I don't know what I just read, but I love it. I would watch a show based on this elevator pitch. Story 36. One of my first jobs was a gas station night clerk at a truck stop. Weird was kind of normal. For example, we had this homeless guy come in. He grabbed a few cookies and began to eat them. He poured a cup of coffee, spilled some, cleaned it up with a rag, then put the rag in the coffee machine. Next, he went up to the register and handed me a receipt. 
He asked me to charge the cookies and coffee for the receipt. I nodded and said, sure thing, you're good to go, and he walked out. I then threw out the coffee with the rag in it and made a fresh pot. Story 37. I worked at a Dunkin' Donuts in a gas station, but one night at 3 a.m. some dude got mad that we were closed. I was baking the bagels and donuts, and he tried telling the cashier at the gas station part and proceeded to pull a gun on him till his friend put his gun down and rushed him out the store. Super odd experience. Story 38. My friend is an overnight clerk at a local gas station chain. He said he once had a woman come in with tear tracks of mascara running down her face in full club attire. She purchased a pint of ice cream, a box of tampons, and whiskey. Story 39. Small town gas station, but we were the biggest stop for like 150 miles. Weirdest thing I ever encountered was a girl who claimed to have graduated high school with me. I asked over a dozen people about her, and no one has any recollection that she ever existed. She wasn't in the yearbook, no one remembers her in any classes. We're in a relatively small town. Anyway, this girl would show up while I was working, kind of sit around slash loiter the premise and ask me the occasional question, and then would follow me home. I walked or used a bike all nine times out of ten, and she would just walk behind me about a block back. It was basically the most benign version of stalking that has ever happened. And this story is the last anyone heard of the OP because some strange girl ate him and began to wear his bones in the streets. People say the OP should have probably been more friggin' concerned. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 40. When my aunt was in high school, she worked the night shift at a tiny gas station. One time in the dead of the night when she was alone in the store, a man came in, walked right up to her, and plopped his wiener right onto the counter. My aunt said she jumped over the far end of the counter, which, considering she is 4'10", is quite impressive, and took off out of the gas station and down the road to the nearest still-open store and called the cops and her boss there. She got in trouble by her boss for leaving the store unattended and not locking it, but she said she wasn't sticking out to figure out what D-Dude wanted. Story 41. I had a friend who worked at a gas station. He said someone came in one night and produced a gun and told my friend to empty the register. Being completely dumbfounded by the situation, my friend told him that he had to buy something first. This is because to open the register, an item from the gas station needed to be scanned at the register. According to my friend, they stared at each other completely silent and bewildered for a few seconds. After that, my friend had regained enough of his faculties to explain this to the robber. Then the robber scanned a Twix, took all the money in the register, and left. Story 42 A chick high on meth came in with her big fake stripper boobies coming out without realizing it. Her trashy-looking boyfriend started knocking on the glass from the outside, pointing at her chest and laughing. Story 43 Over summer, I took a job at a gas station in a fairly bad part of town to save up some money before moving out for college. The station was on the corner of a relatively busy intersection, so I would see speeding cars, crackheads, the usual. One night around 2 a.m., I started seeing police lights down the road and figure it's just some late-night call, but then I see more and more appear, then all of a sudden, there's five cruisers parked in the station with two others blocking the road for one of the streets. I start to wonder what's going on because I'm just this 17-year-old kid alone watching JoJo's BA blasting through the store speakers. My phone speakers didn't work, so I improvised. Suddenly, I see two trucks pulling a giant mass that took up the whole road, and I crap you not, it looked like the submarine-slash-food truck from the Spongebob episode. Once it passed my intersection, the cops all put their lights back on and dashed after it. <sighs> Maybe it's because I haven't completely shaken whatever I've been sick with, but what the hell did I just read? I suppose I could try rereading it, but I won't. I refuse to, and not because my throat is sore, just because. Story 44. Watched a bum drop a handful of pills once, and then he frantically ate them all at once and casually left. He didn't even get five feet in the door. Story 45. A friend of mine that worked overnight received a call from a guy asking if I had seen the crack he lost. Story 46. A guy came in to buy some Red Bull. As he was handing me a $20, he asked if Carl, co-worker, was there. At that very moment, Carl was sitting in his car in the parking lot waiting for his pay to be deposited so he could buy cigarettes. I told him, yeah, he's outside in his car. The guy then proceeded to beat up Carl and left. Thanks for the $20, dude. Story 47. Wow, do I have stories. Not now, but almost 30 years ago. 
First night, training with the assistant manager around midnight, a man stumbles in the door, clutching a hand to his head, falls against the window wall, and slides down unconscious. He left a trail of blood on the way down. Apparently, he was stopped at a traffic light nearby when someone ran up and clocked him with a crowbar through the window. First night on the job. Another night, one of the local prostitutes comes in, asks if she can clean up in the restroom. Very apologetic. She was holding at least three of her teeth in her hand and bloody all around her face. No explanation, no cops, just lots of apologies. Story 48. I don't work the night shift exactly, but this will work. So my store closes up at 10 p.m. I came in one morning around 4.45-ish to find an old Native American man passed out in our kitchen. We have a rather large kitchen because we work next to an industrial area with lots of truck drivers slash oil field workers who start their workday early, so we make lots of food for breakfast and lunch. So I call the police because what the hell am I supposed to do? There's a very bad neighborhood behind the store that's constantly hit for drug busts, like hard crap. Plus, we find bloody needles in the bathrooms all the time. The police showed up like 15 minutes later with some paramedics, and the guy was just asleep, lol. Apparently, he came in around 9.30 p.m. the night before to use the bathroom and got locked in when the two night shift employees locked up. He didn't have a phone and didn't think to look for ours, so he got a six-pack of beer out, ate some of our bread, and went to sleep next to the grill. Honestly, sounds like a pretty fun little sleepover. Surprised that's all he took. Hell, if I'm locked in all night, I'm grabbing snacks, making some of those gross roller hot dogs, the works. Story 49. I was robbed at gunpoint twice over the course of three weeks by the same guy, different gun each time. Story 50. I wasn't working at the time, but I was at my job to get something with my friend. Then we just heard a bunch of screaming, and we have a lot of tweakers in our town. But there is this one chick who is straight crazy, and the cops do nothing about her, so her crazy is unchecked. Well, I assume it's her, because I look out and see what looks like a figure in a dress, so we are finishing up my purchases, and I'm talking to my coworker about it. I finally leave and hop in my friend's truck, person still screaming at high pitch, and as we pull out, the headlights shine on the person, and it's not the tweaker chick, but a bald dude in a dress with a beard leaning against the wall screaming like a girl. My friend kept driving, but I told him because we all thought it was a chick, and he was as surprised as I was. I know it's not super crazy, but thought I'd share it because it was the weirdest thing I've seen when at my old job. Story 51. 11.30 p.m. Dude went to our bathroom and injected himself with some drugs. Ended up ODing in a very low-lit area of the parking lot, and a dump truck driver found him saying he thought he was a garbage bag or something. Guy got lucky because an ambulance was nearby for one thing, but also because the dump truck driver said he almost ran him over. Story 52. I don't have many good tales as my store was in a pretty quiet spot. I'm just excited to see an ask that I qualify for, lol. The most memorable thing, I guess, was an old lady who threatened to pee in the parking lot when I told her we didn't have a bathroom. Our toilet was busted, so we had a porta potty for employees only. Another guy got mad I wouldn't sell him alcohol without his ID. Local police have been doing stings in my area for the past year, and I can't afford to lose my job, so I card everyone I don't know. I called the non-emergency sheriff because he wouldn't leave, and I was starting to worry. The officer told me and the guy that it was my choice. He then argued that I could sell to him if it was my choice. And I'm like, correct, but I've made my decision very clear. No ID, no sale. He was really angry, but left after 10 minutes. The stings for not checking IDs on cigarettes and alcohol sales are for real because I was a secret chopper for that once as a temp job. I drove all around northeast Minnesota, stopping at holiday gas stations, asking for smokes. One guy didn't ask for ID, so I slid him a red card, as was our way, and he just shouts, F! I'm gonna lose my job! I said sorry and quickly left, but can I be honest? I friggin' loved it. Story 53. Worked a gas station in college. The only weird thing I ever encountered was a trail of blood that seemed to come from nowhere. As best I can tell, it started at the hot dog rollers, looped around the store, then stopped at the checkout counter. It was a super slow night, so I think I would have noticed someone bleeding out all over the store. Story 54. I thought of another weird time. Guy comes in paying for gas in $100 bills. We had these pens that tell fake from real bills. Two of his bills were fake. I told him they were fake and showed him the difference. He then said to not worry about the gas and started walking around the store. I called up my boss who said, well, did you keep the fake bills? I motioned the guy over, asked for the bills, and he hands them over. 
I go back to the conversation with my boss on the phone. Okay, I have the fake bills, now what? She says, well, the cops are on the way, I'll be there in a bit. Fang up the phone and try to get things ready for my boss coming in. I then see the cops talking to this guy and it hits me. He could be in for some major trouble and he just handed me the evidence without a second thought. Story 55 I'm not working the night shift, but last night I got off work at 10 p.m. I went outside to my car, and there's just a horse chilling on the porch. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Story 56. I read this on behalf of the gas station attendant I found tied up after midnight. This was in Austin, Texas, sometime in the 1980s. I pulled into the gas station in the early hours and went inside to pay. There was no one at the counter, so I was like, hello? I heard a voice from inside a storage room behind the counter saying, hey, I'm in here, help, I've been robbed. I pushed the door open, and the clerk was there loosely tied to a shelf. I moved toward him, and he said, No, don't untie me. Call the police. Um, okay? The police arrived in minutes, and I told him what I knew. The cop was laughing, as the clerk had been so loosely tied that he could have gotten away at any time. He just didn't want to move until the cops had witnessed him tied up, as he was afraid of being accused of robbing the place himself. I don't know, sounds suspicious to me. Okay, folks, let's hop in our time machines, go back to the 80s, and find Baby Mainly Facts Guy and hold him. What, you thought I wanted to solve this dumb mystery? Hell no. Now, who wants to hold Baby Mainly Facts Guy? Story 57. Worked overnights for about a year at a huge gas station. Dealing with lot lizards, a.k.a. parking lot W's. Story 58. Had a guy walk in looking a little panicked. He asked if he could get some water. I said, sure. He's filling up his water and asks if I know why feet would swell up. I said, no, did you drop something on them? He said, no. My feet are swelling and my heart's beating really fast. I told him I didn't know what that was. I was 18 and didn't know much of anything. Anyways, those are classic signs of a heart attack and heart failure. He hops in his car and drives away. I still wonder if he made it home. Story 59 Meth heads that just need to be let in for a second because their car broke down slash injured slash sick granny slash anything to try to trick you into letting them in so they can stab and rob you but F your corpse. Story 60. Plenty of stealing things, trying to steal things, people angry for no reason and threatening hell on earth. But the weirdest? Boss relapsed and tried to rob the store while strung out. Figured he couldn't take the money when no one was there, he'd be a suspect, so put on a ski mask and swung by while we were open. Junkie logic. Story 61. Not a gas station, but worked night shift at a little mom-and-pop grocery store on the west coast in a quiet tourist town. During the off-season, any time that is not considered summer, had a non-local guy come in around midnight who was drunk beyond measure. I watched this guy go down one of the far aisles, and after a little bit of not seeing him, I decided to make rounds and see what he was up to, considering it was just him, me, and another person working with me. When I located him and went down the aisle, this guy had his pants down to his waist and was peeing on the floor. I proceeded to grab a mop and bucket and make him clean up his mess. Luckily, he didn't put up any resistance, and I think I was kind of ashamed of what just happened. Either way, I wasn't too peed considering he cleaned it up, thus resulting in me getting a pretty good laugh. Why do so many of these stories have to have people peeing and pooping in places? I've never been so drunk or high that I peed or pooped in the wrong place. Don't do that. Story 62. A 350-pound woman wearing nothing but socks, holding a chihuahua. She wanted change for the payphone. Story 63. A couple years ago, this guy was working at a gas station at night in our really small town. The place is not even 20 minutes from me, and somebody set the place on fire knowing he was in there. Story 64. I didn't witness this, but I got to see footage. Shortly after I quit working at my old convenience store job, a guy drove through the glass front, stole some beer, lost his pants, then got back into his vehicle and crashed it into the car wash. The very large, double bay concrete block car wash. He didn't get far. Story 65. Well, the weirdest night shift gas station clerk I've encountered involved being solicited for intercourse. Story 66. I had this really weird a-hole of a man come into my just-cleaned bathroom, and I'm assuming crap in his hands because it was nowhere else except smeared all over the bottom of the sink to try and hide it, I'm guessing. Cleaning that was disgusting. Story 67. My mom has a funny story about working in a 7-Eleven during the night shifts. 
The one she was located at was directly in front of a university, which meant frat boys. One cold night, a drunk frat boy drove straight through the large front window, and she wasn't even allowed to close slash go home. So she had to keep working that night all the way to like four in the morning with this shattered glass all over the floor and snow blowing in. Don't you love when businesses are like, Look, I know you went through some trauma and the store is in shambles, but money, keep it open. I don't care what's on fire or who's breathing in toxic fumes. Story 68. I had the tour bus for Pantera come in for some diesel. This was around the time their Far Beyond Driven album came out. The week before that, I went to my first Pantera concert. Very cool and weird at the same time. Story 69. Not a gas station clerk, but I do work nights on the road and have to get gas and such, but the weirdest I've ever seen is an old pot-bellied man in jean booty shorts and jean vest holding a pot-bellied pig. Yeah, I decided to visit the next station down the street. Story 70. I don't know if this was necessarily weird, but more luck. During and after high school, I worked at this crappy gas station that closed up at 11 p.m. I started doing my cleaning duties when I noticed a penny on the ground. I picked it up and kept sweeping until I noticed a dime by the door. This isn't unusual since people drop change all the time. As I was picking it up, though, something caught my eye as it blew past the door. I went outside, looked right, nothing, looked left, and there sat a fat wad of cash. It was nearly $300 on the ground. Yes, I kept it. No one ever stopped back by asking about it either. Story 71. Once I had a guy who was very high on speed attempt to sell me a soggy pill. He was literally raining sweat. Another time, I had a very unattractive middle-aged female customer looking like she just wrapped up her shift at one of the clubs nearby. She lifted her fupa, grabbed a $5 bill, then handed it to me. I washed it thoroughly afterwards. Oh, this was kind of funny. Kid comes in with his buddies about 2 a.m. and steals my whole rack of vapes off the counter. A few weeks later, I'm just starting my shift, and lo and behold, the kid walks in with his dad. I tell him to get out. Dad asks me, what did I do? I replied, nah, sir, you're fine. It's just the kid that's got to go. I've never been so sure that a kid is going to get a butt whooping when, as I was then. I've also seen slash held my fair share of 9 mil slash 45, 22, and a few really large knives. I was the chill, don't talk to nobody kind of guy. Never got held up, though. So you had a guy high on speed and also a kid stealing a rack of vapes? What freaking decade are you from? Who still does speed? My parents did speed and I'm no spring chicken. Story 72. A security guard for one of the nightclubs in town came into the store one time near Christmas and as he turned to leave the counter, I saw he had massive amounts of blood soaking the back of his shirt. When I shouted, he said it was okay. He had been attacked by someone who was wielding a tomahawk and was part of two aboriginal families who were fighting in town. He was super casual about it, maybe from the blood loss, and said he was on his way to the emergency room right after buying smokes from me. Story 73. Guy comes ambling off the street, clearly high on something. Did you see that dragon? He says. I reply, yeah, I went that way, and point down the street. The man exits the store and walks down the street to follow the direction to the dragon that I gave him. I crap you not. Story 74. I was working alone on the night shift and had a guy stagger in bleeding heavily from a head wound. He collapsed on the floor, so I rang an ambulance and kept him calm till they arrived, applying pressure to the wounds. He asked how bad it was. It was bad, but I told him it was okay, maybe a couple of stitches. He said that some guys just came into the railway station where he worked and started hitting him with a very large adjustable wrench. He was fine until the ambulance arrived, and then he went into shock. The police later told me he was having an affair with the guy's wife. His wife apparently was disabled and in a wheelchair. Not sure that means anything, but maybe contributed to the angst? I found out later the guy almost died. That's a pretty intense bit of drama to get briefly caught up in. You were like a nameless side character in a murder mystery book. Story 75 I'm not a gas station attendant, but at 11 o'clock at night, I went with my friends to the gas station. I bought a cap gun, my friend bought condoms, and my other friend was there to buy flex tape. What the gas station attendant saw, three high schoolers buying condoms, flex tape, and a cap gun. Story 76. Once an unoccupied taxi van parked in our lot, left running, slipped into gear, and took off. Jumped the curb, which caused the wheels to turn, and started doing perfect reverse donuts in the middle of six lanes of traffic. Police responded and took turns trying to jump into it before finally getting tired of messing around and shooting out one of the back tires.
Story 77. One night a lady with scars and scabs all over her arms came in and started washing her hands in the sink we used for coffee and stuff. After about a minute, I noticed she was literally scratching her skin off and muttering, get out of me. I called the police and they came and checked on her. They couldn't really do anything because she wasn't giving any sign she was on drugs, so they let her leave. She drove over four curbs and crashed into the building across the street. I'll spare you the long story, but I had a guy come in one night, lower his pants, come behind the counter, and masturbate against me. This was a long time ago and there are no cameras. I told him the police were on the way, so he better leave. He ignored me the first time, and I said it again, and he said, Who, me? What the F else is in this empty store at 2 a.m.? At least my store went from zero security to building a cashier cage where I could lock and unlock the main door while I was locked inside. I only worked there a few more months, though. That would be one of those moments where I would want there to be a baseball bat behind the counter. I would never use it if someone has a gun, but if someone else is just holding their wiener, well, batter up. Story 79. A friend of mine worked nights in a convenience store by herself and told me about a time when a woman came in drenched in blood. When asked, she said flatly, don't worry, it's not my blood. She bought a pack of cigarettes and was on her merry way. Story 80. I worked at a convenience store, but not with gas pumps. One night at about 11.45 p.m., a bunch of cars started showing up in the lot. No one was coming in, though. I looked out and thought, huh, it's pretty foggy out there. Then I realized it was smoke and the house behind the store was on fire, like flames shooting out of the windows. It looked much scarier in person, too. The cars belonged to the firefighters. I don't believe anyone was hurt. I just locked up the store and went home. Story 81 Working security in a bad neighborhood. This guy is walking, minding his own business in a cowboy hat, cowboy shoes, and a thong carrying around a raccoon. It looked like he was feeding the raccoon something. I locked my door ASAP. Edit. Wearing the thong. LOL. Why the hell did you lock the door? Were you afraid of meeting someone amazing who would take you on a magical adventure? You coward! <laughs> I maybe need to cut back on the cough syrup. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.